Water from there, bud? No, I'm gonna do it with tomato sauce. Okay. Oh. And leaves. Leaves? Yeah, labor. Yeah. It's vegetables. Put this guys. All right, ready? Throw it off to the right. Uh, yeah, ready. Yeah. One, two, three. That's right, yeah, yeah. Oh. Down there, <laughs> 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 
At least it's not pinching, eh? Yeah. It's gonna go well, this way, I think, eh? She's gonna go. Go what way? Yeah, this way. We've got a little buffer here. Tree here, tree there. She's saddle right there. Yeah, she's starting to go, boy. Watch out, she's going! Oh, watch out, Sean. Nice and green and yeah, slippery. Like, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So we're using a, a resource. This is working out perfectly. These are the ash trees that are all dying on the property from the emerald ash borer. They've, it's an invasive species that's killing off all the ash in Ontario, probably all of North America. So we're using this resource just as it's dying. This bark is perfect. Look at the strength of that. 
smoothness, no holes in it, so it's waterproof, and it's going to die and go to waste anyway. So, so happy we we discovered this. Throw that that way. Right through the bird, yeah. So there you go. Can you put the liars back? We good? Yep. Everybody happy for now? Happy for now. <laughs> what a nice. I know it won't last, but. <laughs> Here, Ted, you want to get a shot? Oh! Exactly, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. That's... The mark? Nope. Got more. My shoulder's a little sore. Yeah. How are you doing? Oh, oh great. I'm, uh, I'm carrying the whole thing oh, right now. Look at what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, there, now we got it. Strength uh, roll. Yeah. To the right of that tree. Come hold this side, I can run down there and get it. Okay. Oh, he's got it, he's got it. Oh, he's got it. All right. No problem. Okay, we're gonna roll it down to the end? Yeah. To the center. There's her theoretically off. Feel pretty good here, guys. <laughs> pretty safe. Ready? Yeah. One. Okay. Right? Yeah. One of us. You can talk. You can talk first. So We got these uh, big cedar poles, and we're gonna have them fastened at the bottom, and then we're gonna bend them over to get our shape. Just 
slowly bend them. Yeah, scary. Don't let go of your face and go away. And that's our that's our full shape all the way down. What's even cooler though is like when it dries, you yeah. can undo them and it's, it's there now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Starting off snack time with a roast. What's this? Come here, Buck. Come on. Got a piece of lashing there? Yeah. Here's a little one I got right now, if you want to realize that. Might as well cut the uh, thinner end to thick end. This is really thick. want some more of this. You stepped on the stick. Blamed it on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless you want a beer, you're saying? That's too far. <laughs> you know, space, uh, you know, it's pretty roomy. Quite a lot of color now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I think leave it up, up there and we'll just. Oh, look at that. Cut off of it? I'll start with a wing. Crispy. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a wing and a drum. There's four of us. There's a wing and a drum sticky. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. This one is so outside. good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to skin the turkey and eat it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's skin. Deadly. Just the dog. That's kind of, you guys are just kind of stop out. No, but he's just like, he's, he was trying to make it like, this is the natural cycle of nature. Everything know? gets used. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, because you, you're just going to run out of gas too, trying to haul all those logs by yourself. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed that video something a little bit different but something you're probably going to see a little a lot more of here at uh, arm the channel my self-reliance so what this is behind me is a, a long house it's a um, it's a building a shelter that the first nations in um, eastern north america would have built um, over the centuries of living here living on this land so in this particular region the people that lived here most of the time for over the uh, millennia were the Algonquin people or the um, Anishinaabe. So in this region, they would have hunted and fished more than agriculture, because this land, as you can see around me, very rocky. In fact, we couldn't uh, couldn't dig those poles into the ground underneath the longhouse because the, the rock is like right there. So almost impossible to grow anything. So you get these little pockets of, of productivity, pockets of ideal wildlife habitat, and pockets of good, um, uh, uh, fertility for, for plant growth so right behind the long house you see there's a bunch of raspberries you'll see them better of course in the summer when they start coming up and flowering so I'll show you that but very tough land to live on but since I'm here trying to live off this land and trying to live closer to the land I want to learn more about the cultures who did survive here and lived here successfully and by uh, looking back throughout the last uh, several thousand years and, and uh, trying to understand how the, the First Nations lived here on this land successfully, um, I'm going to try to integrate as much of that as possible into what I'm doing here and how I'm living here. So part of this is to, to uh, learn how to build the shelters that they would have lived in. And like I said, this longhouse would typically have been built by the more southern um, uh, tribes that would have been in the agricultural zones where larger groups would, would gather and live. So a longhouse like this, so the, this longhouse that we built is 12 feet by 20 feet long. A typical longhouse would be, historically, would have been 16 feet wide roughly and could be 150. I think the record that they found that they've excavated is like 450 or 400 feet long. So you can imagine the size of that and how many families would live in each in each longhouse and there might be several longhouses in one village so this is just a small replica of that we're trying to build it as close to how it would have been built back then um, with the resources that we have available and that's what would have been typical you would the the uh, first nations would be using the materials that they have access to and what's what's a regional so in our case uh, cedar posts which would have been common back then as well as now so we have six to seven inch uh, wide at the base cedar post for the upright which is sort of a, like a timber frame like a post and beam structure and then the thin cedar poles that are bent over top of that in a round shape or a, a conical shape um, for snow low but it also allows us to and allow them to use smaller trees which would be more plentiful so by cutting those down they replenish fairly quickly so that's a, a good way of using resources from the land without depleting the resources um, 
So they, that ended up working perfectly, and we tied that off with just the bark that we peeled off the larger logs, which logs, which is very strong, surprisingly. Um, that may deteriorate or dry out over time, but what we'll do is just replace that with probably spruce roots as uh, we continue to work on the shelter and as we continue to, to try to operate or, or use the, the shelter in the future. So spruce roots are quite tough, and uh, if we treat them properly, they can last uh, an awful long time. Uh, the bark itself, that's probably the greatest challenge and would have likely been back then as well, takes the uh, bark from maybe 20 to, to 30 or 40 trees, even for a shelter this size. But I happen to have all these uh, ash trees that are dying all over the land here uh, from an invasion of a, an invasive species, which is not native to this area, and that's the uh, emerald ash borer. So what it's doing is killing off all the ashes. You've seen me use some of those here on the property in the past. And uh, you can see that the rest of them are starting to die off. So we're going to be cutting those down before they die fully and become useless. Um, by by uh, cutting them down, cutting them down while they're still somewhat alive, the bark will peel off in nice sheets like that. So that's working perfectly. And uh, that's what we'll be doing in future episodes. We'll be getting the rest of the bark, bark shelter or bark uh, covering on the shelter. Now, inside, what we'll do is benches along all, uh, both sides. So there'll be 30 or 36 inch wide benches which which are also beds so there'd be a, a, a row of three down each outside wall and then fire pits in the middle and then in the racks um, in the rafters we have all that space it's 12 feet high in the center so all that space up top we can be storing our gear and, and other building materials for for crafts and other things that we need to do here so using the resources that we have here available on this land um, and especially using uh, resources that are replenishable or renewable, such as these small cedar trees. Often these cedar forests are so dense that, um, that you can afford to definitely take some out and, and utilize them and other ones will grow up in their place. Now the purpose of this shelter, and I've alluded to it a few times in the past, especially lately, is that I um, plan on having people, or my friends like this over more often to practice those bush, old bushcraft skills and First Nations uh, skills. So there's endless projects that, um, that a shelter like this is ideal for. We'll also be sleeping in it as well when there's a group of guys here. So practicing all those skills that the First Nations perfected here, like using the materials from the land, including making clothing and baskets and tools and equipment and, and uh, cooking and preserving food, all of those things is what we'll be doing here in the shelter. So it's gonna be very functional. And uh, stay tuned for future episodes where we're going to be adding to this First Nations camp. Um, like I said, this longhouse is more for larger families where larger groups can gather in those agricultural zones. Up here in the, the uh, uh, Canadian Shield and the edge of the boreal forest, typically the, the tribes and the family groups would be smaller in this area and uh, living on this harsher land so they wouldn't have you know thousands of people living in one place because there's not agriculture to support that. So they would have a different type of shelter, which was more, uh, which was quicker to, to set up, use less resources, deteriorated quicker, and was um, something that they could um, just leave and move on and build somewhere else quickly. So much more um, nomadic lifestyle up in this area. So we'll be adding that as well. And then to the north of us, the Cree, where the, and all across northern Canada inhabited that area, which is again a completely different culture, a completely different climate completely different landscape and therefore completely different or or quite different um, uh, shelters and ways of procuring food and so on. So it's something I've really have always been passionate about and I'm going to explore more and more here um, on this land. So you saw that I had lots of help here which was nice to have. It um, would be probably isolated to this type of project not my cabin building um, but I loved having the guys here. It was a lot of fun and uh, we really enjoyed each other's company. So I'd like to thank Jim Baird, Ted Baird, Doug Linker, uh, Terry, who's Woodsman87 on Instagram, and Scott from uh, Swift Canoe and Kayak, who also dropped by and gave us a hand for a few hours. So those guys are welcome to come back, and you'll see them back here helping to finish off the shelter, of course, and then doing some stuff in that shelter, and uh, likely sleeping in it a few times at, at least. So uh, stay tuned, and, and please go over and support their channels as well. Um, Jim Baird, The Adventure. Uh, Doug Linker is, has a YouTube channel and uh, the other guys are on Instagram. So go and check those guys out on their social media accounts and uh, just see what, what uh, they thought of this project and 
how they filmed it from a different perspective. I'm interested to see it as well, actually, so I'm definitely going to tune into that right after the, I watch my own video. For to look back um, two and a half years ago, I talked about to this land and what, uh, what the plans were for it. So this longhouse, we ended up building exactly where I was planning to put the bushcraft camp. So I'm still open to that, possibly in the future, having bigger gatherings here, having more people here, including subscribers or, or other uh, people interested in learning bushcraft skills, as I'm learning. So sharing that experience with you uh, um, firsthand. So stay tuned, um, not promising anything right now, but that's uh, something that's quite possible, possibly gonna happen in the future. So make sure you uh, keep tuning in to see what happens along those lines. So if that's something you're interested in visiting or uh, learning or coming and teaching skills, then uh, please comment below and, uh, and we can have that conversation and, and uh, talk about maybe the future here. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching that video and please make sure that you stay tuned for upcoming episodes. We'll be back at this thing. We'll be finishing off the uh, longhouse in the coming weeks and uh, we'll be updating and uploading new videos as, as we make progress. And uh, please don't forget to like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss the future episodes and hit that notification bell if you really want to be notified every time I put up a new video. So thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you up here at the cabin and the longhouse next time. Take care.